Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of Kenra Engineering College. In today's video session, we'll be covering the topic known as BJTs or which is very popularly known as transistors or you can technically call it as bipolar junction transistors also. So before getting into the actual concept what you people need to study in the syllabus, let us just have a brief introduction to BJTs regarding the constructions and how actually they work. So in the previous video sessions we have checked about diodes, we have checked about photodiodes, LEDs and optocouplers. So in this video session we will check regarding the BJTs. Why did I take up the word diodes as BJTs are the advanced version of diodes. So when I speak about diodes, my diodes were normally or two junction or two layer diodes. So what you used to do was you used to take a p-type material and you used to diffuse it with an n-type material. And this was what you used to call it as a diode. Now in case of your transistors or BJTs, as the name says, bipolar junction transistors. So what you need to do is you need to take one more material which is of p-type and you need to combine it to a N type layer or N material that is present here. So this is what is your transistors or bipolar junction transistors. Bipolar means you can see there are two junctions. There is one junction between P and N and there is one more junction between N and P. And this is what is called as transistor. So you can call this as a P and P transistors with three terminals. So one terminal will be here, one terminal will be here and one more terminal will be here. So you can call this as a you can call this terminal as collector, you can call this terminal as base and you can call this terminal as emitter. Similarly what you can do is instead of sandwiching N type material between the P type material, you can sandwich P type material between two N type material. So you can place two N type material and in between you can place a P type material. This will also form a bipolar junction transistor with N being the collector with P being the base and with E being the emitter. So what I need to know here is whenever I speak about a transistor, a transistor is a three layer device with three terminals and the terminals of the transistors are collector, emitter and base. And the transistors can be of two types which is PNP or NPN transistor. It can be a PNP transistor or it can be an NPN transistor. The symbolic diagram of a transistor is shown here. The symbolic diagram is shown here. PNP transistor is indicated in this manner. See, I have told you there were three terminals, base, collector and emitter. In PNP transistor, the current will be flowing inwards from the emitter. That's why we have shown an emitter with an arrow mark flowing inwards, with an arrow mark flowing inwards. Whereas in case of your NPN transistor, the current flows out of the emitter because of which we have indicated this by a outgoing arrow mark. This arrow mark itself is an indication saying that what transistor it is, whether it is an NPN transistor or whether it is a PNP transistor. So sandwiching one type of material between the other type of material will be giving rise to a transistor with three terminals. So this is how you actually construct the transistor. Now once a transistor has been connected, it is always necessary that we need to turn on the transistor. Just like how we had turned on the diodes, it was reverse bias or forward bias. Very similarly, the transistors can also be turned on. The process of turning on of a transistor is called as biasing a transistor. We call this particular process as, as biasing of a transistor. And this turning on or biasing of a transistor can be done in a various ways. There are different ways in which you can turn on the transistor. Before turning on a transistor, we'll just check out what actually you mean by biasing or turning on a transistor. Whenever I consider a switch, whenever I consider a switch, when do you call a switch is turned on? You call a switch is turned on when the current flows from one end to the 
other end of the switch, isn't it? Very similarly, in case of the transistor also, you say the transistor has been turned on when the current flows from one terminal to the other terminal. When the current flows from one terminal to the other terminal, you call the process as biasing or turning on of a transistor. So, how basically can it be done? That can be done by giving sufficient voltage and current to the respective terminals. By giving the sufficient current and the voltage to the respective terminals or by providing the sufficient potential to the terminals of the transistor and by making the current flow through the terminals of the transistor, you can make a transistor turn on. The way in which you connect the voltage and the current sources to the transistor will be differentiating it to the various biasing methods or the biasing methods of the transistor depends on the way in which you are turning on the transistor. So, it is all about giving proper voltage to the respective terminals of the transistor and making the current flow across the terminals. When the expected current flows across the terminals, you call the BJT has been biased or you say the BJT has been turned on. Let us check out the various ways in which you are going to turn on the transistor. But as I said, when you say that you are giving an input to a particular device and when you are collecting the output from that particular device, input needs two terminals. Very similarly, output will also need two, two terminals. Based on the way in which you are making the terminals as input and output. For example, if we check out here, Input needs two terminals and output needs two terminals, isn't it? So, how many terminals are present in the transistor? There are only three terminals. So, these three terminals should be connected in such a way that I will be efficiently connecting the input and I will be efficiently collecting the output. Which means that out of three terminals, out of three terminals, one of the terminals should be made common. One of the terminals should be made common. Based on the terminal what is made common, we will be having the configuration such as common base configuration, common emitter configuration and common collector configuration. So, in case of common base configuration, the base is made common to the input and output. In case of your common emitter configuration, the emitter is made common to the input and output. In case of common collector configuration, the collector is made common between the input and output. Most of the times out of all these three configurations, common emitter configuration is very commonly used for almost all the operations. For all the application side, you will be using common emitter configuration. And based on the voltage, what you are supplying to the transistor, my supply can work in three regions. First region is called as cutoff region. Second region is called as amplification region or you can call it as amplifier region and the last one is called as saturation region. Based on the current that is flowing through the terminals or based on the voltage that you have provided to the terminals of the BJTs, the BJT is said to work in three regions. Very similar to your diode, you can say it works in forward bias and reverse bias condition, right? Very similarly, this transistor will also be working in three regions. One is cutoff region, one is active region, other one is saturation region. That is if you plot the VI characteristics of the transistor, if you can plot the VI characteristics of the transistor, this is how the characteristics will be. The characteristics of the transistor will be something like this. This region is called as cutoff region. And this region that is above this, this is called as saturation region and the region between the cutoff and saturation region is called as active region. So, it can work in three regions. Normally, if you are asking me which is the normal region in which I make it work, I will normally be making my transistor work in the active region where a signal that is provided to the transistor will be amplified. Cutoff region is a region in which your transistor will be off. Saturation region is the region in which normally your transistor will reach a saturation in which even though you give the input, your transistor will show no improvement in the output. 
active region is the region in which as you go on increasing the input, the output of the transistor will also go on increasing. So, normally I would like my transistor to be working in the active region once it comes out of the cutoff region and I do not want my transistor to get into the saturation region because, because as long as you give the input there will be no changes in the output, but here there will be a or equivalent change in the output with respect to the input whatever you are supplied. These are the basics of the BJDs what you people need to know before learning the biasing process. Before you actually turn on the BJT, you need to know this many basic information regarding the BJT. Turning on, getting back to the things what we studied, see it is given here. A transistor is a sandwich of one layer of semiconductor between two layers of other type. Yes, it can be of PNP or NPN. Transistors of, of two type, yes. There are three distinct regions in the transistor, that is terminals, emitter, base and collector. For any circuit, four terminals would be required to connect the input and output. Hence, for a transistor, one of the three terminals will be common. I told you, common emitter, common base and common collector. Thus, there are three different modes of operation of a transistor, that is common mid, common base configuration, common emitter configuration and common collector configuration. So, as I said, most of the times I will be making my transistor work in which configuration? It will normally be working in the common emitter configuration. And as I said, there are different ways in which you can turn on a transistor. One of the ways in which you can turn on a transistor is called as base bias or fixed bias base bias or fixed bias. The circuit diagram for a base bias or a fixed bias is given here. So, you can see a transistor, you can see a transistor here inside a circle. One of the terminal is made common, that is emitter is made common, that is why we can call it as common emitter configuration. This is your collector terminal and this is your base terminal. To the collector terminal we have connected our resistor RC and to the base terminal we have connected a resistor RB. So, basically what you are trying to do is, you are trying to give potential so that current can flow across the terminals. So, when do you call a transistor has been biased as when the collector or when the current flows from collector to emitter or when the current flows from collector to emitter, you say the transistor has been biased. You say the transistor has been biased. So, how do you make that particular current flow through the from the collector to emitter? you take a voltage source VCC and you connect it to the collector and to the base. When VCC is connected to the collector, obviously right, a current will flow through the collector. The current that is flowing to the collector is called by the name IC and the current that is flowing to the base is called as IB, is called as IB. So, if IC flows through RC to collector, I can say there will be a drop that is happening across RC voltage drop, that drop is given by IC into RC, a voltage drop will happen. Similarly, when the current flows through IB, RB, a voltage drop of IB into RB happens across the resistor RB. Now, when IB flows across this particular base, it will create a voltage drop VBE across base and emitter. So, this is base, this is collector and this is emitter. When the current flows through the base of the BJT, it will create a drop VBE across the base and emitter and the value of VBE normally in case of your silicon transistor will be 0.7 volt. What it means is, if the current has to flow between the collector and emitter, the voltage drop across VBE or the voltage drop across base and emitter should be more than 0.7 volt. If the voltage is more than more than 0.7 volt, then the current will start flowing. This is your NPN transistor and this is your PNP transistor. In the PNP transistor, I said the current will be flowing from emitter to collector. So, you can see the current is flowing outwards. The current is flowing this way. The current is flowing this way. So, there will be a drop of IB into RB here and there will be a current drop of IC into RC here. 
and you can see the difference this is minus vcc and this is plus vcc so if you are making a npn transistor work it should be plus vcc and if it is pnp transistor it is minus vcc normally i will not be using a pnp transistor most of the times for the applications i'll be taking npn transistor itself so you have taken a voltage source and you have connected it to the collector and base because of which collector current flows from collector to emitter collector current flows from collector to emitter now we need to find out some of the formulas so we will be applying kvl that is kirchhoff's voltage law to the base circuit base circuit means this one base and emitter circuit is called as base circuit so if you apply kvl to the base circuit that is i'll start from here because you need to start from here because this is the voltage what you applied right so that will be vcc how is the current flowing current is flowing in this direction right current is flowing in this direction so you take vcc current is flowing in the same direction and you are tracing the circuit in the same direction you are coming from here to here this in di this direction right so vcc minus the drop across rb that is ibrb what else is present any other drop yes there is one more drop here that is vbe that is positive to negative positive to negative means it is minus vb this is equal to zero hopefully you people are aware of this kvl hopefully you people are aware of this kvl going with an assumption that you people are aware of this kvl i am going with an assumption or i am applying kvl to the base circuit to the base circuit that is vcc that is this path I'm applying kvl to this path this is called as base path so this is done from this you can write down a formula for ib so you can separate ib is equal to vcc minus vbe divided by rb which will be the first equation as i said vbe will be 0.7 volt for a silicon and for germanium it will be 0.3 volt apply kvl to the collector circuit collector circuit means you need to apply kvl to this circuit you need to apply kvl to this circuit so if like if we apply kvl what will you get vcc drop across this that is minus icrc and the drop across this this is minus vce equal to 0 so same as been written here vcc minus icrc minus vc is equal to 0 and you can separate the things and you can get a equation v for vce vc is equal to vcc minus icrc so you got two equations so why these two equations are derived as there will be numericals which will be asked in which they might ask you to find out ib ic vc vbe or any of the parameters may be asked they might give you some of the parameters and they might say find out the value of ic vc and vb for a fixed bias or base bias circuit in case of that you need to remember the formula for ib and vce and you can play around this formulas and you can get the required parameters that is why we have derived these two particular formulas but in case of my pnp transistor the polarities are reversed the polarities of this will be reversed in case of your pnp transistor so this is one of the ways in which you can turn on the transistor remember turning on a transistor is a way in which you make the current flow from collector to emitter in case of npn transistor or from emitter to collector in case of your pnp transistor so you can use two resistors between the base and base and collector and you can take one voltage source and you can make the respective current flow from collector to the emitter this is what is called as base bias or fixed bias thank you